Wow. If that does not inspire you... This is Blue Moon. We've been working on this lander for three years. It's a very large lander. It'll soft land in precise way, 3.6 metric tons onto the lunar surface. The stretch tank variant of it will uh, soft land 6.5 metric tons onto the lunar surface. High speed transport, agricultural areas. The deck is designed to be a very simple interface so that a great variety of payloads can be placed onto the top deck and secured. And the Davit system, which is inspired by naval systems, you can see it over here, is what's used to lower things off of the deck onto the surface of the moon. And the Davits can be customized for the particular payloads. We have here as an example a very large rover. And by the way, even though that's a large rover, this vehicle can land four of them simultaneously on the surface of the moon. We also have X-band for 10 megabit radio. There's no GPS on the moon. So if you want to land precisely, and we can land within 75 feet of our target, when you want to land precisely, what you do is you use features on the moon to navigate. Now that we have mapped the entire moon in great detail, we can use those pre-existing maps to tell the system, it's a machine learning system, to tell the system what it should be looking for in terms of craters and other features, and it navigates relative to that. It uses the actual terrain of the moon as guideposts. This is an incredible vehicle, and it's going to the moon. They deploy, they're designed a very wide splay angle. It's designed so that we can land on an incline on the moon. This is the BE-7 engine. It's liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. We're going to hot fire it for the first time this summer, which is the only reason we can do that is because we've been working on it for three years. Most of it is printed. It has 10,000 pounds of thrust. And it has very deep throttling capability. That's critical for a lunar descent engine. Because this lander, when it's fully loaded with fuel, weighs 33,000 pounds. When it's done its descent burn, and it's just about to land, and it's all, the fuel is almost gone, it weighs less than 7,000 pounds. And so to provide the right amount of force on the vehicle with the engine, you need to be able to throttle it way down as the vehicle is getting lighter because it's burning its own fuel. It's two and a half kilowatts of power, which would be a very large solar array. Vice President Pence just recently said, it's the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. I love this. It's the right thing to do. And for those of you doing the arithmetic at home, that's 2024. And we can help meet that timeline, but only because we started three years ago. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. And what I'm laying out here today is obviously a multi-generation vision. This is not going to get done by any one generation. 